Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. Good evening to all of you. Today we are going to talk about your Dobner Miller reaction. Okay, so this reaction in particular is used to make quinolines. So, what exactly are quinolines? This is the scaffold for quinolines. This is a quinoline, and this is a derivative of quinoline where we have a R group, right? So, what we are using over here, we are using a alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, right, along with our anilines. So, there could be different anilines, and with this, we can get your uh, quinoline, okay. Now coming on to the reaction, so this is your aniline, right? Any aniline derivative, this over here I've taken a para derivative of an aniline. It could be ortho, it could be meta also and we can have more derivatives also. We can have some derivative over here or some derivative over here. So we can have a number of derivatives, okay? And now what happens is if we add the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde in presence of an acid, now this reaction requires a lot of heating. We need high temperatures to carry out this reaction, okay? So this reaction requires heating and it also requires as an oxidizing agent generally the most common oxidizing agents used in this reaction are your first of all your uh, nitrobenzene okay your nitrobenzene is used as an oxidizing agent or it could be arsenic acid this is the most common form of oxidizing agent that we use arsenic acid okay now in the previous video let's revise a bit over here here i have made your trans cinnamaldehyde this is your trans cinnamaldehyde right so if you have seen my previous videos you would know that i have always been making trans cinnamaldehydes the reason is in nature trans cinnamaldehyde is more uh, you can say is found in nature in more form in, in more amount the trans form and i am a very i am a very very fond of nature so i'll go with whatever nature says since the trans form is more available in nature so i'll go with trans form okay that's why i am drawing the trans form now how how did we first of all uh, first of all in the first video in the perkin reaction we made cinnamic acid we started with benzaldehyde and acetic anhydride to make cinnamic acid right from cinnamic acid uh, we can reduce it with the help of dibol H right that is diisobutyl aluminium hydride or we could use uh, SOCl2 followed by Rosman reduction okay so we had done Rosman reduction where we had uh, uh, palladium catalyze like we had PDBSO4 and uh, along with that we uh, that was basically catalytic hydrogenation in presence of palladium barium sulfate and some reducing agent right and then we got cinnamaldehyde now from the cinnamaldehyde we can make quinolines because this is if you see this is the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde that we need to require to make cinnamaldehydes now i'll take some aniline this time i'm taking an ortho derived aniline i'm adding acid i'm heating and i'm using an oxidizing agent which is generally your arsenic acid or nitrobenzene and what we get you can see over here is our cinnamic uh, is that iso uh, is a quinoline okay uh, 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 quinoline derivative and the interesting part is see over here i had taken the nh2 group at the uh, ortho position sorry at the para position over here the r dash group is at the para position so we got r dash at the para to the nitrogen para to this nitrogen if i am taking the r group at meta posi ortho position i am getting it ortho to the nitrogen right so we can we can have the R group at the meta position at the, and at the para position. So it's a very useful reaction. Okay. And also it depends on the cinnamaldehyde. See the benzene ring over here in the cinnamaldehyde was near to this double bond. Okay. Had this benzene ring been over here. Let's say we had a benzene ring over here like this. Then what would have happened was uh, this benzene ring would have been there at the third position. Okay. Things will get clear when we look at the mechanism. So we can have different kinds of derivatives of quinoline and that's why it's a very, very useful reaction. So it is used to make prima, prima, prima queen. Now prima queen is basically your uh, anti-malarial. It's an anti-malarial drug and it is used in the synthesis. This particular reaction is used in the synthesis of prima, uh, prima queen. Okay. So what they did was they took this compound. We have NO2 at the ortho position to the aniline and OME group at the para position to this NH2. Okay. Now what we did was we add your ac acrolein. This is called a acrolein. This is alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. The simplest form of alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. This is called a acrolein. And we added arsenic acid AS2O5. Okay. And then um, we also added this, this over here. Arsenic acid acts as an oxidizing agent. For acid we used 80% uh, H3PO4. Uh, the temperature was kept at 100 degrees celsius and the reaction happened in just 25 minutes 
okay so what did we get uh, so basically simply we get our quinoline okay now if you see in this quinoline this NH2 group uh, we have this OME group at the para position uh, that's where we had it in the original aniline and we had the NO2 group at the meta at the ortho position so we have the NO2 group at the ortho position now you might be wondering why did we take NO2 group at the ortho position because we can easily reduce this we can reduce this NO2 group to, to NH2 group I hope all of you know uh, this is a very basic reaction of reducing NO2 to NH2 right and uh, in presence of SNCl we can do that convert your NO2 to NH2 right once we get this NH2 then we can further make this primaquine so this is a preceding step to the synthesis of primaquine once we get the NH2, NH2 group over here then we can simply you know further in the next step we can make primaquine so this is the initial step that is required to synthesize this anti malaria drug that is primaquine and we can make for many derivatives of this primaquine also let's say if we have fluoro over here fluoro at the ortho position of this F okay if we have fluoro at this ortho position or let's say if we have fluoro at the meta position um, then we can also you know um, uh, get the fluoro derivatives of primaquine which are even more potent which are even better anti-malarial drugs now coming on to the mechanism, the mechanism is quite simple. So we have let's say the aniline, the, the NH2 group of the aniline shows like a Michael reaction. It attacks this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, it attacks the alkene. Okay, uh, once it attacks the alkene, this double bond you can see migrates like this. Okay, and then we get O minus. Now we have acid in the uh, acid in the solution. So this O minus attacks the acid and takes a H plus. And once it takes the H plus, we get a intermediate like this. Now once the H plus is taken from the acid, we will have water in the reaction. Now this water will abstract 1 H of NH2 and uh, so once it abstracts this 1 H of NH2, what do we get? We get this com this compound. Now again what happens, uh, now there's a multi, there are uh, quite a number of steps taking place. First of all this OH, o OH has lone pair of electrons and once this OH2 abstracts this H hydrogen, again the acid is generated. So this OH, ox the lone pair on oxygen attacks this H plus and uh, once this attack takes place it forms an oxonium ion. You get a positive charge over here and OH2 positive is formed once this lone pair of oxygen attacks the H plus. And this is a very good leaving group. So this double bond over here, the benzene double bond, this one, it attacks the uh, this particular carbon, and water water gets eliminated. But in the it, why is this happening? Why is this step happening? Because the NH2 has lone pair of electrons, the NH, and it donates its lone pair of electrons like this, and then this double bond attacks this carbon, and water is eliminated, right? So water is eliminated in this reaction, in this step, but in this particular step, and our quinoline is formed. Okay. Once this quinoline is formed, then again we have water in the solution because this oxygen, the lone pair on oxygen, attacks the H plus and takes away the H plus so the water is uh, water is again formed once this water is formed this water attacks this hydrogen and then this bond uh, breaks like this and the resonance is regained in the benzene ring along with that this NH now this this bond gets this bond again gets broken and we have nitrogen and this quinoline is formed okay once sorry yeah over here the quinoline is formed once this is formed this intermediate is formed then we can use a oxidizing agent like arsenic acid we are using in general or uh, nitrobenzene and it acts as an oxidizing agent and then finally once the oxidizing agent is added we get our quinoline right so this is the whole mechanism if you have any kind of doubts you can please uh, post it in the comment section and I hope you found this video useful. I am trying my best to you know relate each and every reaction so that you don't forget. So we started with Birkin reaction uh, with which we made cinnamic acid. Uh, then we did, then we did uh, thionyl chloride that is formation of acyl chloride. From acyl chloride we made aldehyde that was Rosman reduction and from cinnamaldehyde we made uh, quinolines right we made quinolines so I hope you can find this uh, I hope you found this uh, you know relation uh, kind of videos useful if you did please uh, you know just comment in the comment section and let me know you are finding this concept useful uh, so that I can you know proceed further with this particular concept of relating each and every reagent and then proceeding with the reactions right so thank you so much for watching